Hi everyone. Today we are going to start with the limit of a sequence. Limit of a sequence. Then in the last video we have discussed about the definition and uh, uh, some ideas about uh, sequences. So I think you can uh, you could understand that. And uh, in this video. Uh, once more, I am going to define the limit of a sequence, and we have the sequence is given by the sequence a n, sequence a n. Then a sequence a n has has the limit has the limit l. That is, that is if limit n tends to infinity a n equal to l if a n can be made as close to l for sufficiently for sufficiently large n for sufficiently large for sufficiently large n, this an uh, an is close to n. Okay, and also we have if if the limit n tends to infinity an exists, then we say that uh, the sequence sequence converges. Then we say that uh, sequence converges. If the limit does not exist, then we say that uh, the sequence diverges. The sequence diverges. Okay, so we are going to define the definition. A n converges and the limit n tends to infinity. A n equal to L if for every epsilon greater than 0. There exists a positive integer, positive integer n such that mod a n minus l is less than epsilon whenever whenever n is greater than capital n. Whenever small n is greater than capital N, we say that uh, the limit exists implies for every if, if, if the limit exists, if for every epsilon greater than 0, epsilon is arbitrary, is a positive number. There exists a positive integer capital N such that uh, distance between this a n and l is very small for sufficiently large n. Okay, and how can you how can you illustrate this? Right? That is I am going to do. Suppose for that this is the illustration of this illustration. Suppose that we have suppose epsilon is greater than zero. Okay, then we must show that there exists a positive integer. We have to show that uh, integer capital N such that uh, this n a n corresponding to an a n for n greater than n lies inside lies inside a band of a band of width width 2 epsilon about y equal to about y equal to l right so this is the illustration geometrically so i can draw this uh, x and y axis suppose that this is a l l here this is l plus epsilon and this is l minus epsilon right suppose this is the point for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, etc. And then this for 1, this is 1, 
two, this three, this four. Suppose after four, this is five, six, like this. Okay. After this, after this three, n uh, small n equal to capital N equal to three, right? That is after n means are greater than three. These terms are uh, lies in the band of L. That is here the width is two epsilon, so which lies in the band of L. Right, this is a meaning actually. So when we are choosing an epsilon sufficiently small, and we can choose sufficiently large in such that a infinite number of after a capital N stage after three here. All the terms are all the terms are goes to the band go inside all the all the terms lies inside the band width of L width of two epsilon of L, right? So this is this is the meaning geometrically. So first theorem in this first theorem theorem one. We can see from the textbook itself. This is the theorem. This is the definition. Limit of a sequence, and this is the geometrical meaning of this. And next, we are going to this is theorem one. If the limit extending to infinity f x equal to l, and a n is a sequence defined by a n equal to Where n is a positive integer, then limit n tends to infinity a n equal to l. The meaning is f x as x tending to infinity, which is equal to l. If a n is a sequence defined by a n equal to f of n, where n is a positive integer, then limit n tends to infinity a n equal to l. Okay, if a n and f n are same. Then f n's limits is same as a n limit, right? So this is the uh, example corresponding to that. That is find limit. Find limit n tends to infinity one by n raised to r if r is greater than zero. If r is greater than zero, okay. How will you do this? First of all, we have to take this is equal to f of x. This is one by x raised to r. When r tending to zero, this tends to one by infinity as x tending to infinity. That is, this tends to zero as x tending to infinity. Okay. Therefore, limit n tends to infinity. One by n raised to r equal to zero. By using the theorem one, we can see that this is the result is zero. Okay, and uh, also notice that uh, the converse of the theorem one is false. That is, if the limit is equal to zero, then limit of f of x need not imply the limit value. Okay. That is, this is a n pi is a sequence here, and the term sine sine pi x, so the limit extending to infinity sine pi x does not exist, but the sequence consider this value, and this uh, this limit is always is equal to as n tends to infinity. This is equal to zero. Limit of sine n pi as n tends to infinity is equal to zero, but The limit extending to infinity sine pi x does not exist. This is the this says that the converse of the theorem one is false. Okay, next is theorem two. Limit allows for a sequence. Suppose that a limit n tends to infinity a n equal to l and limit n tends to infinity b n equal to m, and that c is a constant. Then limit n tends to infinity c a n equal to c into l. 
c is a constant c into a n equal to c into limit of a n that's equal to l so c into l then what will be the addition and subtraction corresponding to the sequences consider the two sequences and what will be the result when they are adding and subtracting limit n tends to infinity a n plus or minus b n is equal to l plus or minus m this is very easy actually we have done these type of laws before okay. so next is the multiplication limit n tends to infinity a n into b n is equal to l into m and also division division is l by m provided that what this m must be not equal to zero and the power rule a n raised to p is equal to l raised to p for p if p greater than 0 and a n is greater than 0. Okay, so these are the laws for sequences. Okay, next is the problem related to these laws. First law is, first problem is determine whether the sequence converges or diverges n by n plus 1 second one is minus 1 raised to n so here uh, consider the first question n by n plus 1 n by n plus 1 both numerator and denominator approaches infinity as n tends to approaches to infinity their limits do not exist and what will be the limit value? Limit n tends to infinity. Find the limit value in this. Find the limit value. n tends to infinity n by n plus 1. So this is infinity by infinity form first of all. So you have to apply the allopator rule. So this is limit n tends to infinity 1 by 1 which is equal to 1. 1 is a limit actually. So, the limit exist means the sequences converges. The limit exist means the sequences converges. Then look at the second question. Right. So, this is sequences minus 1 raised to n and uh, what will be the nth term? A n equal to minus 1 raised to n. And uh, write the terms of the sequences. Then when n equal to 1, this is minus one minus one one minus one one etc right so look the terms of the sequences so what happened or what is the difference between these uh, terms and uh, the terms in the first one so here the term is minus one and uh, plus one minus one and uh, plus one so this when uh, first uh, first is minus one second uh, 1 next to minus 1 and 1 this does not converge to a particular value so this is actually this does not converges so this is converge to a unique number so this is diverges okay this is diverges next is limit n tends to infinity log n by n and the fourth one is limit n tends to infinity e raised to n by n square. What about this one? This is equal to f of n. Here f of n equal to log n by by n. Then f of x equal to what? f of x equal to f of x equal to this is log n by n f of x equal to log x by x. Then limit x tending to infinity f of x that is log x by x. This is equal to says 1 by x limit x tending to infinity 1 by x by 1. This is equal to 0. So the limit exists therefore use the first theorem in this limit n tends to infinity log n by n is equal to 0 okay so next problem you have to do as a homework okay thank you